Okay, hey everyone. Um, thanks for coming to the to today's session. Um, today we're going we have a talk by Aber. He's um, a PhD student at the University of Freiburg and also uh, part of the organizer team of the seminar here. Uh, Aber has been, yeah, a lot of work on on your architecture search. So um, especially in terms of benchmarking and differentiable architecture search. And today he's going to talk about their, his latest work on multi-objective differentiable neural architecture search. Um, please take it from here, Aber. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, it's nice to have a talk today. And yeah, so as Aaron said, I'm going to speak about our recent work on multi-objective differentiable neural architecture search. So this is joint work with Ria, Benedict, Samuel, Yosef, and Frank. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to start with some motivation. So uh, how NAS is, can still be applicable nowadays in this uh, world of large language models and big models in general, uh, where of course you have finding architectures that are not only performant, but also efficient in terms of energy or uh, CO2 emissions or, or have fast inference times is, is quite important. So I, I, I found this picture today, actually. So it just shows how it's been growing and growing massively, like over. So this is like, I think from last week, this picture updated. So it's, it, you can see things are going like, uh, yeah, uh, quite big recently. And uh, of course, right now it's not like conventional NAS methods are, so like TARS are not directly applicable to these models, but yeah, there are ways that you can, for instance, fine tune uh, large language models or for instance fine tune uh, like parts of those uh, models and of course yeah also how you select these sub networks it can also be seen as a NAS problem right but today yeah we're going to speak about uh, more into the multi-objective angle uh, and how we extend uh, like constraint based NAS methods that were previously used to optimize uh, for instance, per, for performance, given some hardware constraints to a multi-objective settings where we have typically uh, conflicting objectives, for instance, latency and performance, and we want to return the whole Pareto front. Uh, so not only one point given a constraint, but we want to return a Pareto set, right? And uh, optimizing all these objectives uh, simultaneously is uh, infeasible. So you kind can't... Uh, improve towards one objective without making the other worse. So finding the right trade-off is, of course, quite challenging still, especially when it comes to to yeah expensive training times for yeah to get a function evaluation. And also we need efficient search methods, right, in this kind of spaces, uh, in NAS spaces. So where conventional black box methods like uh, which work well for multi-objective optimization, like uh, evolutionary strategies like NSGA2 or so, uh, or BO, multi-objective BO require multiple expensive evaluations. So, and even if you have pre-trained surrogate models on accuracy, right? So you need to like a set of training or trained architecture to pre-train the surrogate model. And uh, yeah, in this work, uh, we, uh, we leverage, so we call it ModNAS, as a short for multi-objective differentiable NAS. So here we leverage hyper networks and multiple gradient descent uh, to profile the old part of front, right? And by profiling, I mean we return a set uh, of points which are in the part of front, hopefully are in the part of front if we don't know that, right? And uh, we also extend uh, the algorithm to work uh, across multiple devices and objectives and uh, to return the, to profile the part of front with a single search run. And how we're going to do that, I'm going to show later. But firstly, I'm going to give you some uh, definitions, right? So, for instance, like uh, what is Pareto optimality and Pareto front? And uh, in a multi objective optimization problem, we seek to find some Pareto optimal solutions, call them alpha star, for instance, architectures, right? So, NAS literature people who have worked in NAS know that, yeah, this is a typical, <laughs> yeah, uh, notation for an architecture, right? And this solution, alpha star, we want that to jointly minimize some vector of loss functions, right? And assume we have M 
uh, objectives. So we'll have uh, this L vector, L ball will be as a function of alpha, right? It will be a vector of M valued vector. And in having such a problem, we define Pareto optimality as uh, a solution uh, alpha two, so dominates alpha one, if and only if uh, the loss of for every objective uh, one to M to big M of alpha two is uh, less or equal than uh, the objective value for all these uh, objectives for alpha one. And the loss vectors are different from alpha one and alpha two. So basically, yeah, we need uh, a dominating solution that has a lower loss value, at least in one task, and no higher loss than any task. And uh, right, so, and alpha star is called Pareto optimal, uh, if and only if there doesn't exist any dominating solution to alpha star. And given this set of Pareto optimal solutions, then, uh, and their objective functions, right, uh, values, uh, we define the Pareto set as this set of points, alpha star, right? And the Pareto from the image of those points to the corresponding objective values. And now I'm going to jump directly to the to our problem formulation. So how we extend uh, the multi-objective uh, optimization. So methods for multi-objective optimization to the NAS scenario. And for this, we're going to employ the bi-level optimization framework, which is yeah typical for methods like starting from yeah ENAS darts, which were a lot like the started this differentiable uh, NAS path and uh, all the follow-ups that came after those. So, and in this case, we also consider not only M objectives like, for instance, accuracy, latency, energy usage memory consumption, but also we want to optimize across T hardware devices. So, and that's those we call like target function. So the Pareto set of uh, alpha T, so, and this uh, subscript T here at uh, an alpha, for each alpha is for every device, right? So T goes from one to big T. So we want a set of alphas architectures in the Pareto front for every device, right? And uh, this set, uh, this Pareto set, uh, we can define that by solving the following level problem. So we want to minimize, with respect to alpha, the loss vector on some validation set, right? And where we have this W star, which is a proxy or best response function for the uh, uh, on the training set, for instance. On the, on the, uh, so basically, it's a proxy for the performance, right? And this can be so this is still uh, a loss vector so we have all our objectives in this loss vector right so co compared to the conventional bi-level problem in darts for instance this is quite more expensive right because we if you have expensive objectives then yeah you you dramatically increase your search cost here right and uh right as i said yeah it's still expensive so we still need to run this T times, right? So for every device, so there is a depend dependency on T, so which is a device type. So if we have big T devices, then we need to run this by level search T times. And of course, this also inherits like the uh, yeah drawbacks from from uh, darts or other uh, differentiable NAS method. That's this lower level problem. This W star cannot be solved exactly due to yeah expensive lower level problem, right, and non convexity. So typically, yeah, here we have an approximate solution, right? Or we have this one-shot model that approximates all this, uh, that approximates the best response function. Uh, we can take one step, gradient step to, to approximate W star, or yeah, we can do multiple steps in that case. So uh, I will say later what we do here. So, and before diving into ModNAS, because there are, quite some algorithmic components there that yeah work together. So I'm going to just show them here uh, one by one, firstly, like describe short and then go into details. So we have this meta predictor first, which is just a regression model to predict the cheap to evaluate hardware objectives, like latency, energy usage, et cetera. So this is pre-trained 
because uh, it's cheap. Actually, getting the latency and energy usage for a lot of architecture is quite cheap. So what we do is that we collect those beforehand and we train this meta predictor across devices. So it's just one, we call it meta predictor because it's conditioned. It's just one regression model conditioned on the uh, device type, right? So you can condition that on device uh, T and then it will give you the latency prediction for device T for a given architecture. Then the second component is a super network. So that is a proxy to approximate this lower uh, level best response function W star. And here we use weight entanglement as well. So it's quite different. For, uh, it's a bit different from weight sharing. So basically, if you have, let's say, a convolutional space uh, where you have choices uh, of kernels seven by seven, five by five, three by three, basically the five by five and three by three are sub kernels of the bigger one. So it's not separate paths like in the weight sharing paradigm. Uh, one thing here is that basically the framework is quite generic, so you can replace the super network also with a performance predictor, right? So, for instance, you can use a GCN to to return uh, the performance uh, to predict the performance uh, like accuracy, but also that is quite expensive, as I said before. Like you need to train a lot of architectures beforehand to to train that surrogate model. So, one shot model like is a more efficient choice in this case. Then we have the third component, which is a meta hypernet. So since we want to, to profile the pride of front across multiple devices and uh, many objectives, so we utilize a hypernet to generate a normalized architectural distributions conditioned on preference vectors and hardware device type. And uh, how this looks uh, and how it works with other components, I'll say later, but basically you can see this as a generative model that at test time, gi you give an architecture and a preference vector, so uh, which tells you what is the trade-off between the objectives at hand, and it will generate you an architecture for those uh, two inputs. And then since the meta hypernet generates an uh, architectural distribution. So what one can do, for instance, is yeah, of course, at inference time, you can take the argmax as Darts does. Uh, but at search time, we have an architect which samples from this architectural distribution discrete architectures, for instance, like GDAS, and then you differentiate through those discrete samples to get uh, estimated gradient to update the architectural parameters. Okay, so the first component is the meta predictor. So, and this, in this paper, we only use for the cheap to evaluate hardware objectives. Uh, so, and what we have is just a regression model. So P parameterized by theta for every objective. So for energy, we have uh, independent. Uh, so we have a regression model for uh, the energy a regression model for latency and so on. So depending on how many object uh, cheap to evaluate ob objectives we have. And this regression model takes an architecture from the space uh, A and uh, device embedding. So these device embeddings are fixed. So how we get this is similar to the help paper, uh, which was from Europe 2021, where what they do there is that they sample 10 reference architectures, which are always the same, and they compute the latencies for those, and they build a 10-dimensional uh, vector, and they use that as a as a feature right for the particular device and this regression model of course uh, predicts yeah the objective value like latency or energy so how we optimize this pretty simple similar to help as well so we optimize the mean squared error loss and well, and to do this we actually uh, sample uh, at each mini batch iteration of the model uh, training an architecture and a device type, right? So we don't do a yeah mammal style update as in help, but we actually just yeah optimize for uh, expectation right across all devices and architectures. And since we have now a differentiable function, we can just use the prediction of these regression model, which by the way is uh, GCN or MLP, so depending on the search space. So we have different choices in our experiments. So we can use this directly as a objective function during search. 
and we freeze the parameters of the predictor and yeah we just backprop the uh, the signal from from that then the second component is the meta hypernet so basically what it does it gets a preference vector r which is sampled from rm right so and I'll show in the next slide so what this uh, looks like so basically this is just a lin creates a linear scalarization of the objective functions so and so it gets this the hypernet meta hypernet gets this uh, preference vector plus the device embedding right and then it yields an architecture distribution alpha tilde so and why is this useful because in basically now with just a forward pass we can generate an architecture across devices and also to profile the parietal front, what we can do is that we can sample a lot of uh, preference vectors and it will give you different points in the parietal front. And uh, just quickly, uh, I will quickly go through how this meta hypernet uh, works is that basically it gets this uh, hardware uh, embedding, DT, passes it through some uh, yeah embedding layer. And then it also has a bank of hypernets so we call this hypernets, but basically, so this age uh, phi one to phi k. So this k is a num hyperparameter that we have to set. But basically, each of these takes the preference vector, the same preference vector, and uh, produces an uh, architectural distribution. So alpha one to alpha k tilde, which are then multiplied element wise with the output of this embedding vector that gets as input the device embedding. Uh, and then all these are summed up and to create the yeah the final output of the meta hypernet. Uh, and each of these small hypernetworks here, like the orange ones, are basically so they get this linear scalarization, which is a vector of uh, uh, m uh, uh, numbers, right? And then these r's are fed into an embedding layer again such that then the output is a concatenation of all this embedding layer and the dimensionality matches with the dimensionality of the architecture space. So basically, if you have, let's say, NAS bench 201, you can represent the search space as uh, a matrix of uh, size five by six. So this uh, dimension of A cardinality will be 30, right? And then each of these uh, guys here will have a an output size of 30 divided by M minus one, right? So we don't utilize the first one because yeah, if you have the sum of these is equal to one, so we just need M minus one uh, scalarizations here. So, right, so basically that's the hypernet. So all the trainable parameters are from these embedding layers, right? And also this E phi zero, and that's what we will uh, use as a, parameterized function to for the architectural parameters. So we won't optimize directly alpha as Darius does, but we will instead optimize the hypernet parameters to generate alpha. So, and how does this look now? So how does the bi-level problem that we defined before uh, change by introducing these preference vectors? So that's pretty simple. So you just multiply, so you still want to minimize now uh, your architecture parameters, but those are parameterized by the hypernet. So now we want to minimize with respect to phi, which are the hypernet parameters. And we want to do that. Uh, so our objective function is an expectation uh, over all scalarization sampled from some probability simplex, uh, right? So, and yeah, I'll show an example how that looks like in the next slide. But now we don't have a vector anymore, but we have uh, a scalar, right? So we have a linear scalarization of the preference vector multiplied by the loss vector, right? And similar also in the lower lower level uh, problem. So, and that's basically, so this R transpose times uh, bold LT, so that's for every device, right? So T, we still have this for every device. So that's a sum for across all objects. So from M equal to one to M. So if we have, let's say three objectives, accuracy, latency, and energy, we'll have three uh, loss values here and a vector of three values for 
of size three for R, right? And uh, as an illustration, basically that's how it looks like. So we have some preference vector here in the objective space, right? So this vector here, and then we pass this through the generator, which is our hypernet, and it will generate you a point, uh, so which hopefully is the Pareto set, right? And that from that you can get an image, which is the Pareto front, right? So, but but you need to evaluate this theta, right? So to get the objective function value. And right, so, and what this means is that conditioning the meta hypernet on the hardware embeddings allows us to generate architectures in a zero shot manner on new test device with that extra fine tuning or meta learning step. So now after we do all the search by minimizing the expectation over scalarizations and also conditioning the meta hypernet on the device type, then at test time, we can just give a new hardware device embedding plus one scalarization at our choice and it will generate us an architecture. So, and to sample during search, to sample the preference vector R, we pick a Dirichlet distribution with some concentration parameters, which we set at one. And we set that at one to have, uh, so we want to profile the old part of front in a fair ma manner, right? So basically that's how it looks. So you'll sample from the M minus one probability simplex in a, yeah, uniform way, but if you change, for instance, uh, the concentration parameters, so this is the case for three objectives. So if you set for the third uh, objective, like a higher concentration uh, parameter for the Dirichlet distribution, it will sample more uh, densely, like a, uh, like higher values for that objective uh, function, right? So the R3 will be higher than the rest. And uh right so and one other thing is that of course this could be also learned so that is also future direction that how to learn this uh sampling in order to kind of have a better coverage of your Pareto front but that's future work so we set this to one and we have something like this always for the scalarizations or preference vectors and now we have all these models and now we need to optimize actually the the meta hypernet parameters phi so one way one naive way is to use the mean gradient so that will optimize through, towards the mean direction of all gradients across devices right and uh, one other way would be to sequentially so get the gradient for device one then update get the gradient for device two, update again sequentially and so on what we do here, we employ the multiple gradient descent algorithm, which tries to, to simultaneously optimize the meta hypernet parameters, which are shared across hardware devices, right? By a G star phi. So this is just a typical gradient update rule, but this G star, star phi is what we're trying to compute, right? So in the mean gradient case or accumulated gradient, this will be, uh, this will have an, one over T, well, so this gamma star, right? So that's what we're trying to, to solve here. So, and this G phi, G phi T is the gradient for each device. So, so we get, we compute the gradient uh, of the validation loss, uh, like scalarized validation loss with respect to the hypernet parameters with respect to every device T. And then, if you'll do mean gradient, you'll get uh yeah, the right the this G star phi will be the mean gradient. But what we do here is that we try to uh to update uh by solving this uh this optimi this minimization problem, right? So we try to estimate these coefficients for all, all the gradients uh for each objective by solving this uh quadratic uh problem where the sum of these uh, gamma's coefficients is one and all are uh, greater than, equal than zero, right? And what we do is that we do the same as in the multitask learning as multi-objective optimization paper from uh, Zener and Colton uh, from Europe 2018. So what they do is that they try to find the min norm point in the convex hull between these uh, all the gradient vectors, right? So what you have here, for instance, in the case of two objectives, so t equal to two. So say so if you see this figure, so you have this uh, 
red uh, red vector, which is the gradient of objective uh, one, let's say, and this uh, blue vector, which is the gradient of objective uh, two. And basically, you try to find the min norm in the convex hull between these two, right? So in this case, you'll basically get the blue vector as an update direction. In this case, you'll get the red vector. And if it's something, if they're going to kind of opposite direction, you'll get this uh, uh, black vector here, which is computed. Uh, uh, so, so, so as such, but these gamma coefficients are basically these one here, right? And for t greater than two, so what they do in uh, uh, multitask learning as multi-object optimization paper, they use the Frank Voigtfeld solver, which is uh, basically yeah, uh, convex optimization uh, uh, like uh, gradient-based methods, where this analytical solution for t equal two is used in line inside the line search for for uh, to compute these uh, coefficients for every. Uh, for every gradient with respect to every objective. And right, so now I described the all, all the algorithmic components and now I'm gonna quickly go through the algorithm so to put them all together so, so it makes more sense. So what we do now is that we have a super net, a meta hyper net, the, architect, uh, the architect, right? Some M objectives and T devices with device features. And we have learning rates, uh, C1 and C2. So what we do is that firstly, we iterate over the our uh, detrain and devalid. So here is uh, devalid in this case, because we first update the meta hypernet. So we firstly iterate over devices. So from one to T, we sample. So for each of them, we sample one scalarization from our Dirichlet distribution and set the architectural parameters so the uh, unnormalized distribution to this alpha tilde phi. And that is the output of the hypernet, the forward pass of the hypernet given the sampled scalarization and device feature, right? Because yeah, we can get the device feature for every T here. And then we sample one uh, uh, like discrete architecture uh, using the architect. Uh, and that architect gets an unnormalized architecture distribution. So, and what we do then to update, uh, to get estimated gradients uh, for the architecture parameters, so for the hypernet to, to back prop to, to pass through these discrete samples is that we use something like a, a Gumball softmax, but it's from a recent paper. So another improvement on top of that called the rain max. And uh, yeah, we show, we have some experiments in the paper where we show that it outperforms uh, like the GDAS uh, uh, graded estimator, for instance. So after we have alpha phi, we set the supernet uh, architectural parameters to alpha phi, so to the discrete path. Then we do a forward pass uh, for each uh, of the objectives, right? So in the supernet case, we only do it for our to get the accuracy, the cross entropy loss, and we get the gradient for each of these uh, objectives with respect to phi. So like t equal uh, m equal one will correspond to cross entropy. Uh, m equal two can be latency. M equal three, uh, energy consumption, and so on. And then, uh, right, uh, we create the linear scalarization, right, for for all these objectives and get the gradient for uh, of the linear scalarized loss. So this is across t devices. And now we want to update the hypernet parameters for across all these three uh, T devices. And what we do is that we use the Frank Wolfe solver to estimate the gamma coefficients for each of the gradients. And then we use the weighted sum of the gradients across devices uh, as the RG star to update the hypernet parameters. So basically what we have here is that we have a hierarchical a problem. So we we have multiple tasks or devices in the in the upper level of the hierarchy, and then we have multiple objectives for each of them, right? And that's one way we propose to solve this uh, hierarchical problem. And then we do the same for the lower level uh, problem. So now instead of 
getting the gradient with respect to the hypernet parameters phi, we get the gradient with respect to the weights of the one-shot model, right? And then instead of using the frank welfare solver, so since there are a lot of parameters, so, so the hypernet is not that big, it's like 200K parameters, but here we're speaking about millions of parameters and running the frank welfare solver will be quite expensive to estimate uh, this gamma t, so we just use the mean gradient here to update the, the supernet parameters. And then in the end, we return the, the hypernet with optimized parameters phi. So once again, to make it more hopefully clear with this figure, uh, so th this is the hypernet that generates uh, alpha tilde, pass it through the architect to sample discrete uh, architectures, and the hypernet uh, gets also the device embeddings and scalar to produce alpha tilde. And these device embeddings are, are also given to the meta predictors. So this is a meta predictor per each objective, like latency, uh, energy consumption, memory consumption, and so on. And the supernet only gets the alpha because the cross entropy, uh, yeah, we assume it's uh, like independent of the device. So we only need, it's dependent on the architecture, right? The cross entropy. And after we get all these loss uh, values, loss function values, then we compute the gradient for each of the devices or so from one to T. And then from there we use the, yeah, FW solver to compute G star. So by estimating the gamma T for each device. So now I'm gonna jump to experiment. So the first one, uh, Yes, we use NASBench 201. So, and here we do simultaneous paradox at learning across 19 devices. And this is actually from the help paper. Uh, so the setting is quite similar to, to that paper. And what we report in this figure is the uh, hyper volume indicator. So of the generated Pareto set, right? So, and as some baselines, we use some random baselines like random search. So we sample uh like architectures run uh, uniformly at random from the search space and we build the prior front uh, out of those also the random hypernet so the the green line here so that is uh the same as our trained uh hypernet uh, but yeah with the randomly initialized weight so basically this is to show that yeah we improve from the initial is the initial parameters of the hypernet so from a random hypernet then we have the meta D2A plus help. So what this does is that uh, it runs evolution using a latency predictor, a meta latency predictor from help and a performance predictor from meta D2A. And we did some changes into the algorithm to adapt it to profile the product front. Uh, and that change is that we run meta D2A plus help for uh, 24 latency constraints. So we run it 24 times because uh, this method actually returns you one single point, not the whole part of front. Right, and for the evaluation, we sample 24, so at test time, after we have uh, done the search, we sample 24 reference vectors and uh, yeah, get the argmax architecture from the meta hypernet output uh, for each of them and build the prior front and compute the hyper volume. And we do this for every device, right? And the black ones around this uh, radar plot are the trained devices. So what we use during search and the red ones are unseen devices, which are used during uh, during the test phase. And the as you can see, uh, the red line is modnas. So basically that's pretty close. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's better than the baselines and the the global Pareto front is this dashed black line around. So that's the best you can get. Uh, but yeah, one interesting thing is that help plus meta D2A focuses a lot uh, on accuracy. So it ignores basically the low latency regime. So that also explains why a random search is also better than meta D2A in terms of hyper volume. Yes, so this is one instance, so for one device, right? So we show, so there we show the hyper volume, but here I'm showing actually the Pareto front for normalized error and normalized latency. So these were the two objectives we minimized in this case. 
optimized in this case. Uh, and yeah, as I said, as you can see, help focuses a lot into the yeah high accuracy regime. Uh, but yeah, ignores this part here a lot. And random search can also sample here and random hypernet as well. While Modnas can get a better, so with only 24 scalars, can get a better uh, view, global view of the whole Pareto problem. And this is actually with a single model, right? So we only have one meta hyper network and then we just pass, yeah, different inputs to get this. So we don't need to do extra fine tuning steps or whatever on train on, on test devices. And this is an ablation. So we also compared the robustness of MGD with uh, different up gradient update schemes across devices. So, so for that, we use the mean gradient update, as I said, so sequential updates and also samples, right? So at each iteration in the search, uh, so basically here, we'll sample one a gradient here instead of, uh, sorry. Uh, so here, we'll sample one gradient from T, one, one to big T, right? Instead of using this weighted sum. Uh, Right, and then the evaluation is the same, but here in this plots we actually show the search epochs, so the hypervolume with respect to search epochs. So, and Modnas is again the red one, uh, and as you can see, the Modnas it's yeah it goes up quite nicely, and then uh, yeah it it doesn't diverge as uh, for instance the the mean update rule, uh, whilst the uh, sequential one works pretty horribly in this case. So there's a lot of noise as well in the gradient updates. And the MC sampling is also, yeah. Uh, so the sampling scheme is also, yeah, not not that good. Interesting is that, yeah, the mean update rule uh, kind of catches up sometime with the MGD, but then it starts dropping. Well, MGD seems quite robust to the end. So, and this is train device and also test device, right? So two cases and the rest is also in the appendix of the paper. And we also tried uh, on the HW NAS bench, they also have energy consumption. So, and they have it for two devices, unfortunately. So we did use only those two devices. And, but in this case, we now have three objectives. So we extend, we just to showcase that ModNAS can also work with three objectives. So basically latency, energy usage, and accuracy. And that can optimize simultaneously across those. So we did run it uh, exactly the same with the same hyperparameters as in the case for two objectives. And the hypervolume in the end is quite close to the global, uh, yeah, optimal, optimal hypervolume. Uh, we didn't run meta D2A plus help because that would need uh, some changes uh, in the algorithm. So that doesn't, intrinsically, those algorithms don't support three objectives. So we'll have to change them. But yeah, we compare to the random search and random hypernet. And you can see from random hypernet, actually, there's a lot of improvements in terms of hypervolume. So there is some learning going on there, which is which does make sense. And the 3D plot, yeah, shows the black surface is the yeah global Pareto front. Then the red one, you can see that some of the points are close, really close to the Pareto front, right, to the global one. While the blue and green one are behind that, if you can see like this point here, and here are behind the, the red one. So they're further away from the Pareto front. And the reference point to compute the hypervolume, by the way, it's... Uh, one one for two objectives and one 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 for since it's normalized objectives right so in this case it will be somewhere here the reference point that computes the hypervolume and then we tried on some more expensive settings so uh so we used modnas to profile parietal fronts on transformer spaces and for that we use the hardware weight transformer space from Wang et al and the task was machine translation, English to German. Uh, and here the setting was more expensive. So the search cost actually was six days on uh, eight RTX uh, 6000. And uh, yeah, we had two train devices and one search device because yeah, that's what they have in the paper. Uh, still, Modnas, it's quite good, uh, especially on the test device actually. 
on the train devices also it's pretty pretty good and as you can see also from this Pareto France so help <clears throat> uh, doesn't do that great here in some cases it just returns these two points here so the hypervolume is that explains also why the hypervolume is that low and also the original yeah hat method is also yeah not that great and comparable to random search as well the setting is also the same, right? So we sample again 24 scalarization at uh, test time. So that's fixed across our spaces. And then the last experiment, we run <laughs> a ModNAS on ImageNet, starting from a pre-trained SuperNet. So for this, we use the once for all pre-trained SuperNet from uh, Kaya 2020. And the fine tuning of the, so basically the search Modna search we ran for one day on eight GPUs. So, and what we got is that we got higher hyper volume compared to random search, random hypernet and help plus meta D2A, which is the, yeah, an evolutionary strategy with 13 times less search cost than help, right? So, and uh, this is because what help does is that they train a performance predictor using the one shot weights. So for that, they have to sample a lot of uh, architectures to train this performance predictor and do forward passes. So that is still expensive on ImageNet. So to get that performance predictor. And then they run evolutionary search using that performance predictor. While we don't need that, we use directly the yeah one-shot weights here. Right. And yeah, that was it. And then as a summary, uh, to conclude, yeah, we I presented ModNAS that uh, we propose to profile the Pareto France on various objectives for NAS spaces, and uh, for that we used the HyperNet and uh, optimized using multiple gradient descent, and uh, by this we can optimize simultaneously across yeah many devices and mu multiple objectives with, with just a single search run. Uh, and in our experiments, we showed uh, improvements in terms of hypervolume on test devices uh, across different spaces, data sets, and tasks without any additional fine tuning and also with reduced search costs with uh, respect to baselines. Uh, in the future, we would like, and we're actually working on this, to apply ModNAS on LLM fine tuning. And we also want more control on the preference vector sampler as I, I mentioned this before so we maybe want to control this so to, to update the Dirichlet distribution parameters in order to sample in areas of the objective space so preference vectors in the areas of objective space where we which we are not covering that much right so that could be another step with that i think i'm quite on time uh yeah thanks and now it's time for questions